live on here. All right, so real quick before I hop into Zoom, I'm going to post. Okay, so I posted a link of the ultimate avatar building worksheet. And before I actually go back into Zoom, I just want to check one thing real quick. Um, oops, hold on. Like, hold on a second. Okay. All right. So I'm going to give people just a few minutes to hop on, open up my chat box, make sure everyone can hear, adjust my volume and all that good stuff. For anyone who watches this on the replay, okay, I just make sure my microphone works. Um, this is probably... And I'm, I will repeat this. This is probably the least sexy video <laughs> you will ever experience because this is what most people don't want to do. Uh, most of it is going to be me sharing my screen, but um, I'm going to real quick. This is like, I want this to be pretty interactive for whoever watches it now or the replay or later tonight or anytime. I think this is probably the most important video to record because I am going to go through a worksheet that, no lie, I paid $20,000 to be coached over a three month period. And this is the first thing we did. And it was the most important thing that I'd ever done. I've done it since for every single type of client. I've helped every client I've worked with, every type of person that I have marketed to, I do this worksheet. So let's see real quick. Well, I know it's only 258 and I'm like a punctual person. So I'm going to give another two minutes, just hold your horses, get your coffee, get your seat straight, and let's, um, I wanted to double check my, my Facebook. Just sending a quick message to my Facebook peeps that I will not be able to see the comments in Facebook until we're done. Okay. Let's see. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and start, even though it's like 2.59, because I just think it's important to get through this whole thing without a lot of interruptions. I'm going to try to walk through the whole thing without deviating from it topic-wise, because if you're seeing this video and you're just like, okay, I need to get my ideal client identified and really narrowed down you're just going to want to watch this video and you want to go through the worksheet and that's it. Um, all right. So for those, welcome. My name is Cheryl Spangler. I go live every Wednesday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And this week, I decided to just simply walk through probably the most important worksheet that you will ever go through. I'm not kidding you. I'm not kidding you. 
And it's something that takes, should take about four to five hours. And if it doesn't, that just means you know your ideal client really, really well. And if it takes longer, that doesn't mean you don't know your client. It means you might have to do a little bit of research. And so let's see. So first thing is that I have done this in so many niches, so many niches, I can't even tell you. But I identified what, how to, like, what my ideal client wants, what keeps them up at night, what they, you know, what they complain about and all this stuff. Like I've been doing this for years, but it wasn't until I did this one worksheet that literally every piece of marketing became clear. Every bit of, oh, if I'm not real clear about who my ideal client is, became even clearer. Everything that I was unable to answer, if I were, if I was selling something that I wasn't able to grab the attention of that particular type of person, this answered that question. If I was running Facebook ads and they weren't working, this answered the question. If I wanted to grow my YouTube, which I did desperately for a long time and wasn't doing it very successfully, this answered the question. So every single thing, your offer you create, how you package everything up, what you post, how you market, um, your Facebook ads, your YouTube ads, your videos, your live streams, literally everything comes from this worksheet. That's how important it is. It's like, if I could have gone back to any business I did that let's just say wasn't that successful, I would say, wow, if I would have done this avatar worksheet, I would have had a much clearer idea of one, that I don't want to do that, or two, who the person is and how to reach them and how to market them. And here's a hint, none of what we're about to do is about you. And I know that that sounds like super easy to say, but no matter what, if you go out and look at most of your marketing and a lot of what you post, I'm not saying you, if you look at what is out on the internet, what's on social media, what people are talking about, it's like them. They're talking about them. Look at me, me, me. So this worksheet is about your ideal client, only your ideal client and everything about them. And I have a couple of examples and most recently just did this because interestingly enough, so I'm marketing all the time like this. Um, using the answers to the questions in this avatar worksheet as all of my marketing. All of my marketing is, I'm going to like let you in on the inside of like my mind when I'm going through some of these, because I'm going to bring up current ones, probably you as an avatar, um, real estate industry, entertainment industry, fitness industry, all of them I've done avatar worksheets for every client, every person that I've worked with. The first thing we do is this worksheet. It's like the biggest pain in the butt for someone who's like, can we just run ads? How do I do ads? Well, I already know what I'm selling. I already know what my program is. Like no matter what you think you know, this helps you know better. So even someone, let's even businesses that have been in the business about five years or 10 years or 15 or whatever, like, let's just say you're super successful. You're making millions of dollars. Okay. Those people, those owners of those companies humbly still will go back and redo this worksheet so that they can get an even better idea about maybe their avatar client, ideal client has changed and that they're just not aware of it. And they're still marketing the same old way, but their clients have changed. And that is the case, actually. That is the case. So I'm going to share my screen and just get to the worksheet and talk about it and start talking about it. If you happen to hop on and we're in the middle, just watch the rest of it, catch up, go rewatch the beginning, or I'll, I'll do like comments of whatever you missed in the, begin in the end. Um, all right, so I'm going to share screen here. And I'm going to go to uh, basically my selection of avatar worksheets. So this document is what the link is to. Um, hold on a second. 
Okay. I'm, I'm going to start with this. So basically a lot of what I just said kind of applies. If, if you want to just pretend like you never sold one thing to the person that you are wanting to sell to and just go back through this again from, from, begin, from the beginning, this would be the best scenario. Um, but when I decide that I'm going to sell something before I decide, huh, I wonder what I'm going to, uh, before I decide to market anything, and I didn't used to do this, before I decide to market anything, first, I figure out if there's a market for it. And I know that sounds like, oh yeah, duh, but I have created products. I have spent months creating products where when it was, cause I, I knew, oh, people were going to love this. And then like, when I'm done, I go to market it and it's like, no one's buying, no one's buying because I never did this. I never really truly sat down and focused on exactly what is the deal with my client. And so let's just start at the first question. The first question is the biggest result I can help a business or person achieve is. Now, I'm going to flip between this worksheet and ones and, and a variety of them that I've answered. But basically, the answer to this question is your ultimate one-liner marketing header. This is, this is the headline. The answer to this question is your headline. It is what the end result is that people want. So kind of like in that one video I did where I was like, focus on the pie, not on how you make the pie, not on the recipe. This is like the biggest result I can help a business or person achieve. I wanna bring up one, it's been a long time since I've done some of these, but um, I did coaching for real estate brokers. I basically helped real estate. There was a point uh, in doing real estate. There was a point that I helped real estate brokers recruit. I recruited over 300 plus people and it just became really easy for me because I got to know the person. I didn't try to sell them on the company and it just got to where I was like, well, you know, I started coaching brokers on how to recruit and I started recruiting for them. I was like their secret recruiter. And so for this one, I'm just going to, I'm just going to open up a couple of these and flip between them. But the biggest result that I can help a business or person achieve is, and when I did this one, I actually answered too much. It was like, this should be one line. I'm like, the, the biggest result I can help is a strategic and well thought out proven plan to get clear. But well, I like, I went on and on and on. It should be Online recruiting strategy using sales funnels, marketing mindset automation. That's even too much. And then, you know, I, I, and then I kept on and I was like, okay, what is the biggest result I can help? What is the end goal? If I had to put it in three words, what is it that I offer that my, all my coaching and all my conversations on the phone and everything we're working toward is for what one result. And it's like, this actually is not as easy as you think. Because it, you, as, a, as a salesperson or like a marketer or whatever you're doing, you're coaching or you're trying to come up with all these things you're going to offer them. But really, this question is, what is the biggest result that I can help a business or person achieve? More agents in their brokerage. That's basically what it boiled down to after like a lot of me trying to figure out all oh, this and, and I'm going to give them this result, this result, this result. This answer should be one result. What ultimately do they want? And for this particular avatar, real estate broker, it was they want more agents in their brokerage and more revenue each month, period, because they're basically dying, going broke, and they're coining the name broker because they're broke. So let's go to another one. Um, Oh, that's that one. Uh, let's go to this one. Okay, so I did it for credit union buyers. And it's like, what? All right, let me just open that up in Google Doc. What is the number one result? What is the biggest result I can help a business or person achieve? In this particular uh, avatar worksheet, I was focused on a credit union member buying or selling. 
And so when I did this one, it was like, well, the biggest result that they can achieve is to buy with equity or sell making a large amount of profit. Like it's keep it really simple, but put it into one line. I know this sounds simple, but when you go to do it, you're like, well, I can actually do a lot of things for people. Uh, I mean, like your, your goal is you're going to do a lot of things for people, but what is the biggest result? And so recently, okay. So basically I'm like on the verge of coming out and launching something I've been working on. And so that's this one that I'm going to show you this one because I show everything to you guys. Um, but basically I signed up, I signed uh, with a partnership with Netflix, Hulu, and Amazon to bring content creators, script writers, TV show script writers together, helping connect content, uh, original content creators with directors, producers, and the streaming networks. And so I basically, instead of saying, well, I know what content creators, I know how to, I know how to find content creators with the best stories in the world. No, I didn't. I basically said, let me just print out this worksheet. It took me two days and go through it very carefully, just like I didn't know them at all. I know we're only on the first question and there are actually only, uh, let's see, 15 questions, but it's really, really important because this answer is the answer that goes in the header of your Facebook ad. It goes in the, it goes in the, um, on your webpage, it's like the main tag, right? It's like the main thing. And, and even this gets consolidated into a, maybe a couple better words. And it's better to keep the words small, don't use big words. People don't, shouldn't have to go like use a dictionary to figure out what you're doing for them. So basically, what is the biggest result I can help a business or person achieve in this particular avatar worksheet is a solid deal with a major network that agrees to pay and produce their TV show or movie. That is what they want. Like if, if I said, I'm going to teach you how to do video and do advertising and do marketing and do blah, 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 blah. What is the biggest result they want? They want a network deal and they want money. Anyone who writes a script or a TV show or a movie and they're a content creator, what they're struggling with is how to get through the gatekeeper. They're struggling with like all this stuff, right? So they want a network deal inked so they can make money. That's their end result. That's their pie. So it's really, really important to write it out, brainstorm, and then take this line and turn it into like, you know, an even better sentence. So I'm going to show you right now how I took this line and turned it into the main line on my site. So I said, what is the biggest result I can help a business or person achieve? A solid, first thing I wrote, you know, when I came up with it, I was like a solid deal with a major network that agrees to pay and produce blah, blah, blah. But that's like too much even. What is it in six words? that I can do for someone? What is it in, in five words? And so I wanna show you how I like turn this into a one-liner. And it basically is, so I took, I took this line, a solid deal with a major network that agrees to pay and produce their TV show or movie and basically brainstorm. This is why I say it takes four to five hours. It, I brainstormed it into one sentence that would actually make sense to someone. And it was partner and profit with Amazon, Netflix, and Hulu, which is exactly what I'm doing. And the thing is, I took that sentence that seemed still confusing to people and, and said, what is the pie? What is the pie? Like, what do they want in the end, right? So that's just an example of just the first question, but everything else kind of stems from that first question. Um, and let me just look at one thing real quick. If you guys are, I can't see the chat thing. So if you're on here, just uh, message and I'll follow up later. Hold on one second, let me just see. Okay, all right, forget it. 
So let's just go to question number two. Oh, let's just try to look at this for a second. Question number two. Sorry, I'm flipping around. I don't mean to. Let me open this in Google. Question number two is describe the favorite client you've ever had that you want more of. Now, I actually ask this to clients when I'm thinking of how they might, how I might market. It just depends on the scenario, but I'm always thinking about this question because it's like, describe the favorite client you ever had. The reason is because you have this thing that you want to market. There's this thing that you want to do in life. There's a thing that you want to do in business and you're going to charge money for it. And you know who you want to target, right? But somewhere down the line, you might find that you don't like that type of person or ideal client. And you're like, I don't know why I started this. I don't, <laughs> I don't want to do this. And I, that just happens unless you're in a career that you've been in for 30 years and you're just whatever. But if you're doing online marketing and you're kind of creating coaching programs or you're wanting to create a coaching program, sometimes you pick your ideal client. You say, this is what I'm going to do for them. And then you sometimes down the line end up not wanting to do that for them. This solves that problem. Number two is describe the favorite client you've ever had that you want more of. So basically, if I were to go through my scenarios here, let me just start with credit union. With a credit union, describe the favorite client that I, I've ever had that I want more of. Well, in, if I didn't do this, I would basically be like, describe a, a typical client. Well, a typical client is a credit union member who wants to buy and sell, but that's not specific enough because what's gonna happen is I'm gonna end up finding a bunch of credit union members that I don't wanna work with. So maybe I'm better with senior credit union, but maybe I'm better with first time credit union buyers. Like, so you almost need to get real specific on, on what kind. So in this question, I said, describe my favorite client. So I thought to myself in the last three months, what is, what is someone that, who is someone that I've worked with that is this ideal client that was the absolute perfect client? I loved everything about it and I want to describe them because I want more of this person. It's like you always have this person, no matter if you're fitness coaching, if you're a chef, if you're business coaching, if you're mindset coaching, if you're life coaching, if you're spiritual coaching, like it doesn't matter what you're doing. You have someone in the last three months that you're like, man, I wish everyone could be like them. That's the person you want to write down here. You know, it was a buyer who bought at 850. It didn't even look, we didn't even go look at the home. They just, they knew what they wanted. Funny story, actually, they used Redfin to look at it and then called me and said, oh, we're ready to write an offer. And I was like, what? So it was, but there was no controversy. There was no um, they love, they, they listened to what I said, my guidance, they took my guidance. We won the offer. Like I listed all the things they wired the funds perfectly. They knew how to access the title company, but I also gave them all this information. They, they showed up on time. They were grateful to work with me. The biggest thing they liked about me was that they never had to ask what was next. like, I literally, by listing these things, you are, you're literally creating the person. This is why I put, you know, this, this is why I put this, um, oh, I don't have it, but anyway, the picture on the front, because you're describing this person. Like, I even believe that when you create your perfect avatar, you should actually assign an image to this person. You should. So let's go to another one, um, real estate brokers. So years ago when I was doing the real estate broker coaching and recruiting, I said, okay, well describe my favorite client that I've ever had and I want more of. Actually by doing this, I realized <laughs> that I didn't actually enjoy as much as I thought working with the real estate brokers because this guy, he was a broker, but he was a different kind of broker. He owned a company called My Homebridge. I, you know, did all his marketing and I created literally every automation that he had going. Um, and so 
number one thing on my list when I described him was like he had money to pay the right person who could do the job. He had money to pay, right? Um, you want to list these things because these are really, really important because this is who you're attracting. Uh, they have already, he's already paid other people who have given him outlines of what to do, but he doesn't have time to implement it. Why is that important? And that's important because in my marketing, I'm going to say something like, have you paid three or four different people to help you figure things out, but it never worked because you never had the time to implement it? Click here. Like every answer you give about who your client, ideal client is by describing them, you're literally describing all of your marketing posts. So here I'm like, has a clear idea. I just thought of this guy. That's all I was doing when I wrote all this out. How did he... He had a clear idea of who his target market was. Like he knew what he was doing. He was doing bridge loans for agents and brokers and buyers and sellers. So this made it really, really easy for us to create Facebook ads. Cause once I wrote all this out, um, we knew who our target market was. I said that he had a product for his target market, um, that he has someone in house to work with in addition to himself. So strategy sessions every week went really well. So you could say something in your marketing, like, do you have an in-house person that, uh, that, that could work with a marketer and like everything in here that I listed, uh, is something you use in your marketing. This is so powerful. And I still want to go back to my first comment that I said when I went live, this is the most unsexy part of running a business, but it is the most important because without this worksheet, I'm not kidding you, I would be lost. I would be lost because I would always reflect back and say, what should I market now? What should I post now? What should I go live about now? What do you think my ideal client wants? And I don't need to, everything is listed. And so um, anyway, so let me go to another one. Uh, so let's see, Avatar. Okay, so let's just go to this, script writer mini series, content creators. Describe the favorite client you ever had. It's a guy I'm actually working with right now. Wasn't the first person I worked with, but it is the person that is my favorite client. And I'll, you know, and the reason is he had the money to do what he needed to do. He just needed to find the right person to help him do it. He was willing to strategize on the phone. Like I just wrote out, like in my mind, why is he my most favorite client? Um, and all of this gives me He's highly connected in, and he can refer business to me. That, that's a good reason to have him be one of my favorite clients. Um, he's intelligent and knows what he's doing and actually is a marketer himself, but not in the area that I am. And he knows, this is something consistent, I would say. He knows that his, his a place that he is, his genius is what, doing what he's doing. And he's okay hiring someone who, whose genius is doing what he needs. So anyway, just answering this question out. All right, so the, set, the, the next one is, what is the biggest problem your most ideal client has? What's the biggest problem your most ideal client has? If you don't know what their biggest problem, well, if you've worked with people, you know what their biggest problem is. But if you don't know what their problem is, you just go to Facebook and find a group where your ideal client is hanging out and find out what they're complaining about. Find out what their biggest problem is. Find out which post with a problem topic has the most comments and go look at the comments. And really the, your whole world of answers is in the comments. So let me just go to this one, a uh, credit union member. Um, what's their biggest problem? Well, you could say that every buyer has the same problem, but that is actually not true. This particular kind of buyer, uh, they're not aware of communities, quality, uh, quality, schools, amenities, prices of the community. This one may be the same with every buyer, but the approval process on a credit union is slightly different. And the time to, time to search. Okay. So one of the things on this might be the same with everything, but Basically, typically credit union members are two working parents 
and they work full time and sometimes they're coming from overseas and they really do need like more of a concierge service. So I kind of listed like what kind typically that I've worked with probably like for the last six years. And uh, they also, sometimes they buy cash and they buy cash from international bank accounts. So you kind of need to know a little bit about that, how people can remotely sign and do online notary in different countries and kind of know the process so you can walk them through that. But knowing the biggest problem, so we can go to another one, let's see. Uh, let's just go back to the real estate broker one. What's the biggest problem most ideal client has in this worksheet? It was, they're not making enough money to pay their bills. They're not making enough money from the agents and the brokerage to pay their bills every month. And I already knew that because I lived it. But if you don't know, go to some broker forums, go to broker, go to Facebook groups where brokers hang out and basically find out what they're complaining about, find out what their problems are. And this is super easy to do. You can literally search Twitter, you can search Facebook, you can search Reddit, you can search um, Quora. You can go to any social media and type a sentence about your uh, ideal client and find out what people are complaining about and just start reading the comments go to blogs about real estate brokers. Like I'm just using this as an example, but what if you're a fitness professional? Go to blogs about fitness pros and find out like what they're complaining about. That's their biggest problem. So if you don't know, and if you're wondering like, what should I market? What should I use in my Facebook ads? And what should I post? If you're wondering what to post, you need to do this worksheet. If you're wondering what to post, you don't know what their biggest problem is because I already know what the biggest problem is of my perfect client. I know what the biggest problem is of my ideal avatar, my ideal client, because one, I did the worksheet, and two, if I didn't know, I went to social media and I basically searched until I found all the things that people are complaining about until it got, cons until it got redundant, and then I made a list of the top 10, and then that becomes everything I post about. Or you could even narrow it down to the top five. Okay, so then the next one is what frustrates your most ideal client. Now, you might think that this one is identical to what's the biggest problem your client has, but it is not because this one, I did list financial emotional pain the same, but let's just go to a couple examples to see. Um, okay, so hold on one second. Let me just see what's okay. If we were looking at this one, I would say what frustrates your most ideal client the most in this is what is the biggest problem? The biggest problem in when you're talking about like, let's just say in the example of script writers, uh, they have a story that needs to be shared, but absolutely can't get anyone to listen to them. They have a busy demanding full-time job and they don't have time to pursue the directors, producers and network heads. But if you compare that to number four, which is what frustrates your most ideal client, it's being told no or no response at all, not reaching a decision maker, not knowing the process, then their problem, their frustration is if, again, like if I were to go to social media and I would look for groups of these kinds of people, I would say, what are they complaining about the most? And normally, it's posts that have the most comments. Let me go to another one. What frustrates your most ideal client the most? This one is the real estate broker one. Uh, the answer here is they feel overwhelmed. So the difference on this one is, what is the biggest problem? They're not making money to pay their bills. But this is what frustrates them the most is they feel overwhelmed and no one seems to be trustworthy to give them a real answer as to what to do. and what I mean by this is in this particular client, they're overwhelmed and they don't have a path to success on how to grow the brokerage and actually make money. Like that is like across the board. So it's different from like what their biggest problem is that the lights are gonna be shut off because the bills aren't paid, but their frustration is that they can't find the path to get um, positive revenue. 
And so more frustration is they feel incompetent with regards to digital and online strategies. Most brokers are over the age of 55 and they are not technology savvy. So that's a frustration. So, I mean, like you see how these all like answer every question you could possibly have because when I'm done with the what frustrates your most ideal client section, I could literally cut and paste this into a Facebook ad and it will instantly attract exactly who I'm looking for. Because by the way, the answer to every single question is your solution. The answer to every single question is your solution. I'm trying to see if, um, we have any comments, hold on. Okay. Okay, so anyway, let's go to the next one. And then I'll just kind of like, I'll kind of skim over a couple of them. So I wanted this to kind of be like a shorter live stream today so that you could get some Lots of value packed into a short time. So number five is what are the four to five steps for them to achieve success and get results? Uh, this is basically your program. So if you were to say, uh, let me see if I wrote this in here. Oh yeah, number 12. If I were to skip ahead, what would you do if you were in their situation? So the question is, what are the four to five steps to it for them to achieve success and results? You basically spent an hour or so researching who your ideal person is, what is the biggest problem, what frustrates them the most. And then the question is like, okay, so what are the four to five steps that they need to achieve to get results? Well, you already listed on the first one, what is the biggest result that you can help a business or person achieve? So you already know like what is the end game result and now you know what's a problem and then you know what frustrates them and now you're going to be like okay what are the four steps that you can take them through the journey just imagine you're walking through the woods and you got to take all these lefts and rights like simplify it for them what is the four steps that they would have to take to get from their biggest problem to their, the biggest result you can offer them this basically will be consolidated into probably two or three words. Each step would be like one word or two words. Um, let me go to an example, which I did. So in this example, which is like TV content creators, what are the four step, four to five steps for them to achieve success? Well, the success they want is a network deal. And the, the steps were, were um, they need the mindset that they can do it seeing how I wrote a bunch in here. And actually this got way consolidated because initially you write a bunch of things, a big long sentence. And then it's like, then you like need to narrow it down to like one word precondition for stardom. Then the next step they need is to set up their content. Then they need to pre-launch. I mean, like I ended up changing this whole thing because it boils down to needing one word. Let me go to another one. What are the four to five steps for them to achieve results? This is for the credit union buyer. Pre-approval, identify what they want in the home, win an offer, release all contingencies, close with ease. This probably was, <laughs> this is like the, the shortest. And that's what you end up using to create your entire program. So when people say to me, I'm having trouble putting together my program, or I have a program, but I need to package it up a little differently. I would say, if you would have done this worksheet or you want to do this worksheet, then you basically will already know what frustrates them. You know what their biggest problem is. You know that you're about to tell them the four steps to get from their biggest problem to your biggest result you can give for them. And then there, that's your program. Literally, that's your program. If your program is not like this, like if your program is not four to five specific uh, steps to walk them from the, where their biggest problem is to achieve their biggest result, your program is confusing and it's, it's, they're, they're not understanding it. If your program is not selling, 
it's either you haven't identified the actual problem your client is having, you don't actually know who your specific client is because you never maybe took time to say like what the results you're getting them, what's your perfect client, what's the biggest problem, what frustrates them, how do they get success, which is your program. So go look at your program and say, does my program answer the five steps that they need to go through to get to the end, right? The yellow brick road. Is it taking them to the end in four simple steps? Uh, let me go to another example, actually. Another example would be, let's see, that's that one. This one, the brokers. I mean, when I did the broker one, I made everything way long. What are the four to five steps for them to achieve success and get results? in the real estate broker example, really could have just, I ended up narrowing everything down to these first two words. First thing they need is clarity on what they need to do. They're completely confused. They would not admit this, but they are when they're on the phone, they, they admit it. Uh, they need a sales funnel strategy. Then they, they, because they need to attract people to interview. That's the second step is one, get a good mindset, okay? Two, have a strategy to attract new agents. Three, uh, get attention with traffic and run decent ads, which means you need the content, the answers to all these questions, run ads, um, and then automate the process because otherwise your life is gonna become one big circle and miserable because you don't have time to implement, do or follow up with all the stuff. So that's that. Okay, so then the next one is what keeps your perfect client awake at night? Now, let me tell you a secret about this question. The answer to this question is not about work. It is not about their results. The answer to this question is personal. This is like, what keeps your perfect client awake at night? Let me look at some examples. Okay, uh, for a script writer, um, what keeps your perfect client awake at night? I actually wrote in here, worry, fearful, anxious, just to help you out because uh, if you say, what do they worry about? What are they fearful? And what are they anxious about? One, that their idea or content or show or movie is really not that good and that they'll never be accepted by a network. Therefore, they've wasted all this time and money. Let's just dive a little bit deeper into that one. Just going into number one, the, I mean, just going into the number one thing that keeps them up at night, I could dive into that without even having any more of these answers. Because if they are worried that the content or idea or show or movie is really not that good, what does that really mean? It means that they will be perceived as a loser, that they will be perceived as a failure they will let their kids down, their family down, their wife down, their husband down. They will prove all these people who said you're never going to make it right. Like there's so much emotional crap behind just this sentence that I actually write out in a journal. The thing that keeps them awake at night is that their idea, content, show, or movie is not really good enough and will never be accepted by a network. But what does that mean to them personally? And so that's kind of what I ask myself when I answer I answer, this is why it takes me hours, because I answer the question of what keeps them awake, but then I say, why? I normally say why five or six times. Why, why will that keep them up at night? Well, because if it doesn't get accepted, then they'll feel like a loser. Why would they feel like a loser? Well, they'll feel like a loser because they've been trying all this time and spending time probably away from their family and at night writing and solid solitude and it basically is all for nothing and they will be embarrassed. They'll be humiliated. They'll be uh, told that they, they, people knew that they, never, they could never make it in the first place and this is just justifies that they can't. So like all this stuff comes from one answer. So then you go on and say, well, what else keeps them awake at night? Well, what to do to reach the right people keeps them awake. And then I say, well, why? Why does that keep them awake? Well, because 
they could literally be spending hours and hours and hours on LinkedIn, never reaching the right people and it's a complete waste of time. And they ultimately never get their end result, which is an inked deal making money. Let me go to another example. What keeps your perfect client awake at night? Okay, so this one is the credit union buyer. How they will have time to fit everything in while they're working, meaning i.e. buying a home, um, making sure they don't get scammed when buying. And what I mean by that is I've had some deals where, you know, the listing side or the selling side basically makes you think that there's a bunch of buy offers and then they offer more money than what they really want to and they get pressured to do that. They basically get scammed. And that takes an intelligent and savvy agent to know and ask more questions and determine and to never allow that to happen. So the, the, there's ways, you know, this answer is something you could say, I make sure my clients never get scammed when buying. I make sure they have a solid buyer when they're selling. So see, like I use these as the things I market. Um, <clears throat> but if you were to answer what keeps your perfect client awake at night, how they will, what keeps a credit union buyer awake is how they will have time to fit everything in. Why does that keep them awake at night? Well, because they're worried about maybe getting fired because they're spending so much time looking for a home or maybe their approval, uh, their approval expires and, or maybe they're in a lease and then they'll be out of a house. Like all the emotional feelings are behind the first sentence when you say, why does that keep them awake at night? I mean, I could spend a week on just this worksheet and then I will never ever be beat out by anyone else selling what I'm selling because no one takes the time to do this. Uh, let me go to another one. Okay, what about real estate brokers? What keeps the perfect client awake? Well, I was one, so I already know what kept me awake at night. The next month's rent. <laughs> the next month's rent keeps them awake at night. Not him not making enough to make the, the rent payment, right? Thank God brick and mortar is disappearing to some degree and going virtual. Um, fear that more agents will leave. Uh, afraid that they don't have it in them to learn what is necessary to turn the brokerage around. That is a legitimate fear of many that I worked with. Um, a fear or worry that there is no retirement with real estate, which there's not. You got to invest in other things. Fear that they will not be able to pay their bill, their personal bills, and they will have to sell or short sale their own home. True fact, in 2011, I sold over 127 homes. I was the short sale queen per se in Fairfax. And over 50% of every home I short sold was a real estate agent. So that was a fear. Anyway, so let's just go on to another one because uh, I know this is getting long, but you know, do you see how like, do you see how maybe you didn't take time to really figure things out about your ideal client. And so all the questions and issues you have are all simple to answer. If you were to stop right now, print this out, go through this over the next few, few days. Okay, number seven, what humiliates your perfect client? Now, what humiliates them is different than what keeps them awake at night. And that's why I put here, what is an event or an occurrence that they are trying to avoid? Well, let's do a couple examples. Script writers, what humiliates them? Uh, being told no. So what is, what is an event or occurrence that they're trying to avoid? They're trying to avoid being laughed at, looking like a fool, especially if they're trying to stay anonymous in what they're writing, you know, like ghostwriters and they get outed, uh, they're, they're trying to avoid being sued, okay, if the right disclaimers aren't used. So this is a really important. They're trying to avoid um, the disclosing of information, like if they're recapping, but let me go to another example. What humiliates your perfect client in the scenario of a credit union buyer being taken advantage of, 
uh, losing a home because of not being approved. Now that would be the, the really the issue of the agent not doing their job, making sure they're approved, but they find their perfect home and they're not approved. Well, three other buyers are already approved. So basically they're humiliated because they look like an idiot because no one gave them the correct path. Um, what humiliates a perfect client knowing they could have gotten a better deal, but didn't. Um, so anyway, okay, so let me go to another example or another question. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, why am I not able to see? Okay, so let's just go to another question. So what is the cost of staying where they are right now? The answer to this is like, how bad can things become if they don't fix their current situation. So let me go to script writers. What's the cost of staying where they are right now? Well, they never get to pursue their dreams. They never get the story out that's in their head. They feel like a failure. They don't make money. They waste time and years. They lose respect from all their peers, family, friends. They lose authority. Like pff, there's a lot. The cost of staying where they are right now is you know, a lot of emotional and personal failure. So if you go to credit union buyers, let's just say, what is the cost of staying where they are right now? Well, it'll cost them thousands if they don't buy at the right time. It'll cost them their family if they don't find a home that can accommodate aging parents. Um, it'll cost them time lost with loved ones if they can't find a place that can accommodate aging parents. And it will cost them their freedom if they can't sell for more than what they owe if they have to relocate. Because a lot of people like gotta relocate, they can't sell their home, they're screwed. Um, in this scenario with real estate brokers, what humiliates the perfect client is, um, this one I really went in depth <laughs> because of the time. I was actually having so many sales calls with brokers that I just took the content that came from our calls. Um, but basically, what humiliates them? Christmas, graduations, birthdays. <clears throat> because if business is not up and bills are not paid, they're not buying Christmas gifts. They don't have money for big graduation gifts like the other parents. Like, this is like you get into the real emotions of what humiliates someone. Like, that's a big word. If you were to ask what humiliates this client, that is something that really hits their emotions and their, this is like stuff that makes them cry. And, you know, when you don't have enough free money to go out to dinner, like I've been with brokers and they didn't ask me to pay because they did it because they didn't have the money. So, I mean, I'm just saying like all this stuff is easy to find online. This is not something you, if, if you just decide one day that you've never sold a program to a type of person and you're going to just, you've never experienced it yourself, but you want to sell a program to someone. It's easy to find this information. Just got to go search social media. Uh, so anyway, so let's just go to another one. What is their most urgent pressing crisis? Now, I actually used this question as the, as the qualifying question in the entrance of this group because I thought it was a good question to determine, is it this or is it this? And the reason is because depending on the answer is what I was gonna focus more on. What I found was uh, 80 to 90% of the people said their biggest and most pressing urgent crisis was 
um, delivering their program to the right people. And I know that in order to deliver to the right people, you got to know what all this stuff is. You got to know what keeps them up at night, what humiliates them. You got to know what they worry about, what they're fearful about. Because if you do, you do not have a problem delivering. Because delivering means posting, creating live streams, creating marketing, running Facebook ads, and all that content of what you go live about, what you do videos about. Like you don't have to overwhelm yourself. Literally narrow down your top three problems of your ideal client and do absolutely everything around those three problems. That's it. Just be repetitive because new people who are going through whatever you solve are coming into existence every single day. Then there's the question, what are the top three things that frustrate your perfect clients on a daily basis? This is like a daily basis, totally different from everything else because it is, it's, it's either something that frustrates them that they have to do, things they don't want to do, people they don't want to be affiliated with or around, circumstances they don't want to experience, or chores that they have to perform. And so I use these because over time I found that having this extra sentence actually helps me answer this question. What are the top three things that frustrate my client? It's either, what is it that they don't want to do? Uh, people they don't want to interact with, circumstances they don't want to have in their life, or chores that they don't want to have to do. And then number 12 is explain what you would do if you were in their situation. So I always like to do this because a lot of times we can solve everyone else's problem, but we can't solve ours. <laughs> so if I were to say, I'm really having, I'm really having trouble dating, you would be like, well, just put yourself out there more and stop being such a, you know, uptight, whatever. Like you would tell me like, what, <laughs> what are the steps that someone would have to take? I mean, I'm sorry. What, <laughs> I just lost my train of thought. <laughs> what would you do if you were your best friend? If you asked your best friend what to do, if just go outside yourself for just a minute and be like, if I were in the situation I was in, what would I tell myself to do? If, if, if my current problem, like if the problem of your ideal client, like if your current problem, uh, you were, if you were giving advice to someone on your current problem, what would you tell them to do, you know? So I always ask this question, like well, explain what you would do if you were in their situation. If your ideal client is having a problem getting a result, what would you do if you were in their situation? Break it down, one, two, three, four, do this. And almost every single time when I answer this question, I literally am like, well, I, I do this and I do this and I do that. Like if someone's having a problem reaching their ideal client, what would I tell them to do? I'd say do their avatar worksheet, take the information from it, create a program, <laughs> take that content from that worksheet and market, take that content from that worksheet and run Facebook ads, and then make sure that you're personable, humble, and stop talking about yourself. And then you solve their problem. So then I would say, okay, what's the biggest mistake your perfect client is making? So mistakes and myths are like the best, best thing to market. They're the best things to do live streams about. They're the best thing to post, to do Facebook ads on. You want to know what to do Facebook ad on? Do it on your client's biggest mistake they're making. In order to do this, um, you know what problem you solve. And, you, and so you want to say, what is the biggest mistake my perfect client is making right now, like instead of doing this, they're off doing this. So let me give you a couple examples. Um, what is the biggest mistake a perfect client is making? Script writer, content creators. Not being clear about what commercial markets would benefit from their content. That's one big mistake. For example, if you're a content creator and you're writing about TV and movie, and uh, you're writing about a show about food, but you're like marketing it to like a drama documentary film producer. They're not gonna care. So like their biggest mistake they're making is that they're not really clear about the commercial market that, that would benefit from their content. But if I were to use that same example to credit union buyers, I would say, uh, what are the three things that frustrate them? Hold on. What's the biggest mistake that client is making? Thinking that they can wait to get approved instead of 
and instead they're searching on the internet for homes first. That's a mistake. Second mistake they're making is they think because they have a good job and high income that they're not gonna be scrutinized during the approval process. Wrong, they will, just like everyone else. Also mistake number three, they think that there will always be another home. I always say, if you find 80% of what you love, get it. But another example on the real estate broker side would be, okay, so what is the biggest mistake they're making? I wrote, it's funny to look back at these. What's the biggest mistake a perfect a real estate broker makes? Posting random shit on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube that means nothing to their target agent market. I would say everyone in real estate does that and that is one of everyone's problem. Um, not posting anything or burying the head in, their head in the sand on having an online presence or strategy to grow. Thinking people will just find them without effective marketing relying on past clients to support them in their brokerage with new leads. I think I kind of mixed these. So this was probably one of the first few things, first few avatar worksheets I did. And I can tell right now, like how I was confused answering the questions sometimes. Let me go to another example. That was, oh, so I think I did all the examples there. Okay, so then the last one what does your perfect client complain about when they're with their friends or family? Typically it's, I just wrote these as examples, but it's either not enough money, not enough time, or don't know how to do something. These are literally probably the three answers of every single ideal client. But the question is that you have to ask is if their complaint is they don't have enough money, the question after that is, well, what is it that they're going to do with that money that they that they don't, what do they not have enough money for? I'm all about the fourth, fifth, and sixth question. So in this scenario with script writers, I would say, what does your perfect client complain about when they're with friends and family? Lack of a plan, lack of money, lack of people to connect with, lack of opportunity. So basically, I would say, if you're trying to market to these people, you could say, do you feel like you have no plan and no money to get a pilot created and you don't know the right people and you feel like you're lacking all the opportunities that other people have? Click here. So this one is um, credit union buyer. What does that perfect client complain about? Well, they complain that agents not being available. They complain not knowing the process. They complain about wishing they knew uh, more so they didn't lose another buyer, that was a seller. They complain about the competitive market in general, how they keep having to write different offers and they keep losing them. So, I mean, all of these are basically word for word, like marketing points, bullet points. And then finally, and do not forget this last one. This is like the, the super important. Name and link to your four most important competitors. And the reason this is important, three reasons. Number one, you have to know what your competitors are doing in order to differentiate yourself and be different. Otherwise, you're just if you're just doing exactly what they're doing, then what's going to set you apart? The other thing is <clears throat> when you're advertising, if you have not done a lot of Facebook ads and you want to take all of their clients and bring them over to you, you will want to know who your top four competitors are so that you can run a Facebook ad targeting their clients, meaning targeting the people that follow them. Because if, if, uh, if a hundred thousand people follow Gary V and your program you want to sell is to the clients of Gary V, then all you got to do is target your Facebook ad to Gary V people who are interested in Gary V. That's an example. So, um, if you look at real estate brokers, uh, I don't know if I listed them. Oh yeah, I did. I did list them. And so what I did was I just ran ads to people who had already liked their stuff and I just pulled people left and right. <laughs> I hate to say it, but yeah. And so here I've got like a couple talent um, media companies listed, but do you see how, how this literally solves everything? How this solves everything? Where is my screen share? 
Um, So <laughs> let me stop the share a second. It, so if you're watching this later, comment on who your ideal avatar is. And it is no surprise to me that I don't have 10 people on this call. And that's okay. I still wanted to record it because why is this no surprise to me? It's no surprise to me because this is the least sexy thing in your marketing and business, but it is the most important thing you could possibly do. And those people that take time to do it, you already know by the time you're done with the worksheet, why you're better than your competitors, because you've taken time to do this. Those that don't do it, you're still wondering why your stuff doesn't work. And I'm just like, I'm like kind of being like in your face about it by that, but I'm only saying that from experience. I've done it the other way. I've created first and found out what people wanted afterward and been like, they don't even want that. <clears throat> I've, I've done that more than once. And so I would say, no matter where you're at in your business, if you want to know or identify where your actual challenge is, is it your message? Is it your offer? Is it your package? Is it your delivery? You will be able to answer your own question of where your challenge is by going through this worksheet because the thing that you get stuck on the most is probably the thing that's the area, you know, it defines, this will define where your biggest challenge is. Message, offer, package delivery. So ah, that took an hour and that was just to go through it. So I hope you guys like this. I, I hope that this video helps you. And if you get a chance, let me know what you think, who your ideal client is and which of the questions kind of brought up the most aha moments for you. Anyway, see you guys.